Algebra 1, number 1.9a, we're going to talk about using formulas. The plural, more than one, for a formula has two possible forms. We can write formulas by adding an s to the n. We can change the ending by adding an e, so it would be formulae. And both are correct. Usually mathematicians use the word as formulae. Now within the U.S., we say formulae, and we make the i have a long i sound. Outside the U.S., they say formulae with a long e sound. Isn't that odd how that happens? But that's the way it is. So you might hear me say formulae, okay? Either way, it's an equation that shows a relationship between two or more variables. And formula for the area of a rectangle is A equals LW. That's area equals length times width. We substitute the known values into the formula and solve it as it's written, okay? So we have this one. D equals RT is called the uniform rate or uniform motion formula. And d is the distance a moving object travels, that's how far. r is the rate of travel, that's what speed. And t is the time it takes for the object to travel, how long. And units have to be, they have to be compatible. The units of the quantities need to be compatible. So if the rate is given in miles per minute, then our time must be in minutes, see? So Bob traveled 30 miles per hour for five hours. How far did he travel? Well, Bob's rate of speed was 30 miles an hour. Bob's time was 5 hours. We plug that into our formula, d equals r times t. His rate is 30. His time is 5. So 30 times 5 is 150. His distance was 150 miles. And we can use division, the inverse, to check it to make sure we did it correctly. 150 divided by 30 is 5. 150 divided by 5 is 30. Yep, it works. All right, let's take a look at this one. A equals half bh. That's the formula for the area of a triangle. So here we have this triangle and the base is down here that's four inches and the height we can see is right here that's six inches. Okay? It's not this that's the slant height that's completely different we do that in geometry. The true height is perpendicular to the base like a T so the height is 6 inches, okay? We just take that 4 inches and 6 inches and we plug it into the formula. We substitute the given values into the formula and we solve it. So for A equals half BH, the base is 4 inches, the height is 6 inches, and we get half times 4 inches times 6 inches. So a half of 4 is 2, that's 4 over 2 if we multiply it. And 4 over 2 is 2, times 6 is 12 inches squared. Remember, because we're doing area, it's squared, okay? Now let's check this one out. If one measure is given in inches, this height is 30 inches, and the other in feet, the base is 3 feet, make them compatible by changing 3 feet to 36 inches. It wouldn't make sense to change this into feet because it's not an even increment of feet, see? If this was 24 inches, we could change it to 2 feet, because 12 and 12 is 24. But because this is an odd number, 30, it's like 2 and a half feet, well, we just change them all to inches. So our formula, half equals, area equals half base height, we put in the half and 36 inches as our 3 feet and 30 inches as our height, and we can multiply a half times 36 and get 18, that's half of 36. Then we multiply it by 30, a little math on the side, and we get 540 inches squared or square inches. Now we could have also done this. We could have grouped these two sides together, right? Because of the associative property, it says it doesn't matter. Associative property of multiplication says it doesn't matter which ones we multiply first. So we could have multiplied 36 times 30 and got 1080 and then divided that in half to get the 540 inches squared. See? Either way, it wouldn't have mattered. Associative property. All right? Okay. We're going to move on to 19.B, and we're going to talk about dimensional analysis. Yeah, what's that? All right? So I hope I'll see you there. Bye.